I'm going to show you how to use the Excel Companion Significance Testing Workbook to test the assumption that regression residuals have a normal distribution. I'm assuming you already understand a few essential concepts. First, I'm assuming that you know how to do regression analysis and obtain a table of regression residuals. Second, I'm assuming you understand the basics of null hypothesis testing, like how test statistics are compared to probability distributions to test the null hypothesis. This video is for people who understand these concepts and want to learn how to test regression residuals with Excel. It's easy to test the assumption that residuals follow a normal distribution with the Excel Companion Significance Testing Workbook. You can download this workbook from the Excel Companions website. You just copy and paste the table of residuals from regression analysis. The worksheet does the calculations and shows you the results. To see how it's done, let's work through a couple of examples. So here we're looking at the testing the normality of residuals worksheet in the workbook and some residual output has already been inputted to this worksheet. It's already generated some test statistics. I want to just start by talking through what is here and what we're looking at. So the first place to start, I guess, is the instructions. It says you, to, to, to complete the Jesus worksheet, you paste residual output table from a regression into the clear uh, columns A through C with residuals and column C. So that's already been done. So this residual output we're looking at in columns A through C down to row 21 has been copied and pasted from a regression that we've already done. And these are the residuals and numbers, the observations uh, shows the predicted values. And then in column C, the residual values. And so once these residuals appear in column C, the worksheet has some built-in formulas to examine these residuals and test whether these residuals are normally distributed. So we see some descriptive statistics here, uh, the n, the mean standard deviation of the residuals, the skewness, and the kurtosis. And so some of these values, particularly the skewness and kurtosis, are used by one of the tests of the normality of residuals, the Jacques Barr test. Um, it starts with the null hypothesis that the residuals do have a normal distribution and generates a test statistic called the Jacques Barr test statistic uh, to evaluate the likelihood or the plausibility of that null hypothesis. So in this case, it applies a formula to the sample size, skewness, and kurtosis, and tells us that the JB test statistic is equal to 0.114. It then applies, uses that st test statistic and applies it to a chi-squared distribution with two degrees of freedom, and says reports that the p-value is 0.945. And it lets us know that the critical value for the test would be 5.991. Obviously, the p-value is far below, or the, the, uh, the JB test statistic is far below the critical value, and the p-value return is far below um, 0.05 uh, to conventional setting for a hypothesis test. So the conclusion is fail to reject the null hypothesis. And in this case, that means the residuals pass the test. Uh, that they appear to be normally distributed. The worksheet applies another test, uh, the chi-square goodness of fit test, using some histogram bins and assessing whether the bin values of the residuals uh, would match a bin values of a, of a normal distribution of values. The chi-square goodness of test fit chi-square goodness of fit test starts with the same null hypothesis. The residuals are normally distributed. Gives us a chi-square test statistic. In this case, it's 1.954. This test will have seven degrees of freedom, which is based on the uh, number of bin, bin values that we're looking at. Uh, it has a p-value of 0.962, far above the alpha value of 0.05. Uh, the critical value would be 14.067 and our test statistic is quite 
below the critical value. So for these reasons, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. The residuals have a normal distribution, uh, so it passes the test. Um, both these tests are used to assess the normality of residuals. I think the benefit of the Jacques Barre test is that it gives a, you know, uses the skewness and kurtosis to generate a single test statistic that's compared to a p-value and uh, compared to a chi-square chi distribution to give you a p-value and we'll work with a range of applications. The chi-square goodness of fit test to be honest leaves a little bit desired because some of the expected frequencies are going to fall below really what's necessary for a chi-square test and the number of bins you use kind of depends on the number of observations you have. So in this case, you know, we're, we're, we're attempting to use, uh, let's see, there's like eight different bins. No. Yeah, eight different bins to assess these residuals. And we only have 18 cases. So it's slicing the data a bit thin. But what I do like about the chi-square test is it allows you to look at a histogram with the standardized residuals and get a, just a general feel of their shape uh, whether they're single peaked, uh, whether they appear to be symmetrical, whether they trail off on one side, if they're obvious, you know, exceptions to a normal distribution. So it gives you a chance to look at the data, which is really important. So the Jacques Barr test statistically may be preferable, but for visual purposes and visual inspection and, uh, and diagnostic purposes, the chi-square goodness of fit test is awfully good. So this is all what the worksheet can do. Now let's work through an example where we're analyzing the normality of regression residuals using the significance testing worksheet. So this takes two steps. First, we're going to estimate a regression equation and get obtain the residual, a table of residuals from that regression equation. And then we're going to copy the table and then bring it to the significance testing worksheet and the worksheet page that will apply the tests of normality. So I'm starting with the state's workbook and I'm going to estimate a very simple regression equation just to obtain some residuals that we can look at. So I will go to the data page and I will use the data analysis tool pack. Regression tool. And let's see for the input range. I'm just going to, I'm not, I'm not thinking too hard about the model. I really just want to get some residuals to work through it. So as the input Y range, let's, uh, let's use government worker. And as the input range, let's do education. And they have labels. Zero confidence level is fine. Uh, you put in a new worksheet, and this is important. We want to check to get the table of residuals. Okay. Click OK. Okay, so we're seeing the output. Um, if this were a different video, I would look closely at the coefficient and results. But for our purposes, I simply want to go down here to the residual output and copy this table. I should have 50 items, one for each state. There we go. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to jump over to the significance testing workbook with this table copied. So I have a table of regression residuals outputted from Excel copied on my clipboard and I've opened the significance testing worksheet and I want to test the normality of residuals. So I click to this worksheet and I'm going to paste the output I've copied into columns A through C. So I'm going to click the upper left cell of that area and paste the output. And just to make sure I want to look at it, I've got, so I've got my 50 observations and in column C, I've got the residuals from the regression equation. Now the worksheet will automatically uh, calculate the descriptive statistics I need for the test, the N, the skewness and kurtosis, and report the results of the test in the worksheet 
if I look at the Jacques Barr test, uh, the null hypothesis is residuals are normally distributed. The JB test statistic is 26.357. It has a p-value of 0 0.000, not actually zero, but less than 0 0.001. Uh, the critical value would have been 5.991. The JB test statistic is more than the critical value. The p-value is less than uh, 0.05. So we have failed the test. We would reject the null hypothesis of normal distribution and these residuals do not appear to be normally distributed. Let's look at the goodness of fit test real quick. Uh, it has the same null hypothesis. The chi-square test statistic from the test is a whopping 60.275. The critical value would be 14.067. So we have failed this test as well. It has a zero or nearly zero p-value. Uh, so we would reject the null hypothesis that the residuals from this regression are normally distributed. Uh, both tests are consistent. They have similar p-values. And uh, well, if we look at the histogram up here of our standardized residuals, it kind of gives it away. We have a peak at around zero, but look at this right tail coming off to, to one side. Some of the observed values of government workers are far more than we would expect from education alone as a predictor. But so if something is going on here where we've omitted a variable or some other misspecification in the model, um, which shouldn't be a surprise given how quickly we just picked out some variables more or less at random to estimate a, re a regression equation. But this is a diagnostic would tell us that the simple model that we're using uh, fails some of the assumptions of regression analysis and the residuals here are not just noise. This is not the pattern of noise and the statistical test tell us that the residuals in this case are not just noise. There's something going on here and this is not a good model of the number of government workers in different states. And we can see that pretty clearly from this test and that's why this test is useful.